Good morning traders. Welcome to the TMT stock market strategy video for Tuesday, January 10th. All right, so we have market divergence, right? And what does that mean? Well, we have the NASDAQ for the next couple, of, last couple of days uh, making new all-time highs where we have the Russell pulling back and the S&P and the Dow pulling back. So we have strength in the NASDAQ and that could be sector rotation or it just could be a selective few that there are about four or five stocks in the NASDAQ 100 that really run and rule the NASDAQ 100 such as Amazon, uh, Facebook, Google, um, Apple if you will and uh, they were up today Facebook and Apple were up as well as Amazon so um, you, you, you got to be careful with saying oh wow we have strength in the NASDAQ in the technology sector but also we did have some strength in biotechs and it is also heavily weighted in biotech so I um, just want you to understand that and realize that now uh, but we did have some weakness in the in the S&P 500. We had weakness in crude oil. And I want to cover the commitment of trade reports. I did get a couple of emails over the weekend. I put out a special edition video on gold and crude oil. And I showed you the commitment of trade report. And I mentioned about the producers, which are the smart money. That's the commercial traders. And the large speculators are the dumb money. Now, uh, I'll go over this again. Large speculators are good when the trend is the beginning of a trend because they usually trend that that um, that asset class, whether it be stocks, commodities, what have you, uh, early on, like you could see here, that's this is the speculators up top. So they usually trend, but what happens is they usually also are wrong when there's market tops. And when you have um, the producers short crude oil, and I mentioned this last week, the last four weeks short crude most at, in uh, all of 2016. It's not a timing tool, but you have to be careful about adding to or building a long position when the producers are on the short side because they are the smart money right they hedge on what comes out of the ground so um, that being said um, again not a timing tool but also when we did our analysis I wanted to show you here I said if we don't close above 55 for two days uh, and preferably a week and build a new base uh, we look to get we look to break 52 now we're, we're not that far we're only right here um, 53 was the first break and then ultimately we need to break 52 uh, let's see what happens tomorrow one day does not make a trend but nonetheless there is weakness in crude oil okay and part of it is the uh, Iran news how they've exported a lot more than expected so um, uh, crude oil no matter what has huge uh, headline risk okay uh, versus gold or uh, some other precious metal or grains uh, but crude oil is uh, has been notorious ever since uh, that I could remember about headline risk so you have to be very very careful with that but we are still above we are still bullish the chart is bullish but I'd like to see if we lose 50 uh, 52 on a couple of days on a closing basis and we take out this pivotal low of 51 and we get back ultimately we need to break 50 and that would really alleviate the bullish symmetry of higher highs and higher lows uh, at the moment we're not there yet but how do you use this work well you can easily if you see that you had the commitment of trade reports um, short right uh, you can look for spots and areas and clusters of resistance where you can go out and short now also remember uh, money flow plays an important role in, in a lot of uh, trading in the markets okay and I'm going to get to that in a minute with the spiders. But let's take a look at the commitment of trade reports. Now, remember, this is from this is from Friday, okay? Because uh, they come out on Tuesday and they don't report till Friday. And you can see that the producers are what are reducing their short exposure. Now they're always short, but if you could see here in the beginning of 2016, they kind of knew that the the market that gold was going to rally, okay? And look how look how minimal short they are. And this is what I was talking about here when I say to you guys. Um, uh, you know, watch this area here because when we when, when we get to a point, um, let me just let me just get my cursor out here. Uh, here we go. Okay, so when we get here, you could see the trend. The speculators like to trend the move, where the producers are always short and they get more short as the move goes by. However, remember this is not what you want to follow. You want to see that the commitment of trade reports that produces are very minimal short while the speculators are adding to their long position on an early move. That's how you you, you use this work, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, you could see that the um, producers are lightening up their short exposure all the way back from uh, August, September. So uh, anticipating uh, at least a reversal in the short term, 
And sure enough, here's what we had. I showed you yesterday, we had the chart uh, in gold, and it looks like right now, right now, I mean, this does change, looks like a real nice bear flag here, right? Um, obviously, it's a little sloppy, but you, you understand what I mean. So at the very least, we should come down to the bottom of this trend line area of the lower end of the bear flag, and if we break, then we'll start looking for some lower lows again. However, what I like to see is, is I'd like to, um, and I like gold, you guys know that, I like gold for 2017, I'd like to see somewhere in here a higher low, whether it be 1140 to the 1120 pinch, and then we should see higher prices again. And then once we take out that 20, okay, again, then I think that we'll take out that 50, and we should get at least back up to uh, 1250, um, or even, let's just say, uh, 1230, 1240. But that's what I'm looking for in, in gold at the moment. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's always been tough, right? You're always looking for that one more flush or at least that pullback, and then you never get the pullback, it looks like, because all these algorithms. And that's what we're going to be talking about in a second. Next is the, um, you can see the bear flag here in the GLD. And we're just sitting just inside the TMT proprietary price channel. So, um, again, it could go either way here, guys. I'm not looking to buy GLD or GDX here. I'm looking for a little bit of a pullback. We're still uh, making lower lows and lower highs, and we still have bearish symmetry. You could, you could just see that here. I mean, we're just, no question about it, that we're just, we're just headed lower. Yes, we retraced, and that does happen, okay? Uh, but just, again, a word of caution. Be careful if you're looking to get long or start nibbling in. Um, I sometimes, I, me personally, I like to just let the, if the move doesn't happen, it don't happen. If I missed it, I missed it. Nothing you can do about it. GDX took a little bit of a pause today. We, we got a little bit of a gap area here and a little bit of a gap that we just filled on the way back up. So I'm looking for, again, if the GDX can give me some guidance and I get a little bit of a back test here from this lower, uh, from this trend line, this downtrend line, and we hold, that'll make that higher low that I'm looking for from here to here, then I could see higher prices. But until then, um, I, I always treat this little retracement rally as, as a suspect. Next is going to be spiders, and we'll talk about this now. Now, we're looking for, I'm always looking for money flow. And money flow, guys, takes a big role in dark pools. Um, and a lot of uh, uh, phonies out there, if you will, they always like to talk about dark pools and how they do this and how they do that. But if you don't, ha if you don't understand the concept of how the dark pools work, uh, you're really just regurgitating information. I mean, it's just, uh, I will be very careful what you listen to. But nonetheless, money has literally continued to hold up. But look what's happening here. We talked about this. Okay, when you have a retracement in volume, that means what happens? You have volume coming out. There's not a lot uh, of support to this move, number one. Number two, you have money flow coming out of the market. So what happens? Lack of dark pool activity right? So who's buying spiders would just be the retail public, which what? Cannot really sustain a decent move. So unless we see a pickup in money flow, okay, and um, and I want to see a pickup in money flow, and I want to see some price moving, and I also want to see us get it back to normal range here. This is just the 250 day, which is usually, that's the average of the yearly range, and look at how well below we are, okay? That's not a good sign. Now, we could still easily just continue to rally. I mean, it's not a question about it. But I need to show you this so you guys can be prepared and you're not blindsided when something does happen. January is notorious for market sell-offs, okay? January, February, the start of the new year, are notorious for market sell-offs, as well as what? August, right? August is also bad, and September, October, all right? Um, they, but they don't, have, they don't usually happen. But if you look back, uh, you'll see in January... We've had, uh, and this is just last January, um, you could see that market sell off from back here, okay? Everybody, I'm sure, is fresh in their mind still. So watch out for money flow when there's lack of money flow, lack of dark pool activity, okay? And uh, we get more in, involved in it in our uh, in our trading room. But um, if you need more information, send an email to support at tradingmarkettechnicals.com. We'll give you some more info on it. Um, spiders. You could see here, we just really didn't do too much of anything. We did roll over a little bit, very, very light volume. So even this little pullback, I always treat that as suspect as well, right? So uh, we could easily explode higher again. NASDAQ could take everything else up too. Remember, technology. But I'm watching those banks. If those banks start to roll over, when you have banks really starting to roll over, and, and that this that move was pretty pretty euphoric, right? I mean, uh, um, I, 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 I'm not really excited the banks rally that hard and and it, and it's actually sustainable 
All right, so that's something that if the market does get weak and we get a pullback in rates like we did today, that could be a go-to place for a fade if you know how to trade the fade. Next is IWM. Now, we close below that 135, that key level of 135, right? Because we want to see what? We want to see this, this thin zone, right, to come right down to this area here. Okay, that'll be just below the 50, but above the 61.8% retracement, then we would reevaluate it. Uh, right now, on a P.E. ratio on the IWN basket, it's very expensive right now. So I would not be looking to buy or add to any new positions in IWM, Russell 2000. Now, I think Russell's going to be a great play for 2017 if Donald Trump follows through with what he has said for business. So the small cap business uh, is going to actually shine even more than the large caps. However, we don't know that, right? It's all, it's all um, he said, she said type thing. So just keep that in mind. And last, we're going to see the cues. We have a nice big bearish rise and wedge here. However, we did break out. We need to see two closes above it, then we should see more prices. Um, but usually when we get two, two closes above it, I mean, we're extended already. Look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Forget about even the move from, from November lows. I mean, it's just uh, pretty much extended. Uh, so this could be the top for Qs, at least in the short term, for a pullback back down to the TMT proprietary price channel. So let's keep an eye on that. Watch that crude. Watch gold again. And we got to watch the TLT. As you can see, rates were pulled up. And then we had a big move in uh, TLT today, uh, as well as we did the last couple of days. So TLT could easily get to 127, which is a low render that gap area. I didn't put it on today because I didn't have enough time. Have a great day, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.